This is a raw tank of the kind that's going to fly to the moon. You heard correctly. This Torrance-based company is taking part in a historic moon mission. And here we do our own little magic and hopefully maybe now is the time to make some noise. President of Scorpius Space Launch Company Marcus Rufer is excited, as he should be. Scorpius is said to contribute to the world's first lunar landing with a spacecraft built by a private company. This small business, which boasts customers such as NASA and Boeing, makes aerospace systems and components. It is a leader in all composite pressure vessels and has sold its Pressure Max cryogenic pressure vessels to over 20 commercial aerospace customers. But one recent sale is getting a lot of buzz. This company, known for its innovative and award-winning technology, is widely recognized by the aerospace industry, and its product is ready for launch. Yes, Scorpius's flight qualified Pressure Max composite linerless propulsion tanks are going to space. These tanks are integrated and preparing for launch on Intuitive Machines' lunar lander Nova C, which will launch on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket en route to the moon. Nova C utilizes a liquid methane and liquid oxygen pressure fed engine, and both propulsion tanks are Pressure Max composite linerless tanks manufactured by Scorpius. Marcus explains how the company got the gig. One and a half years ago, we were approached by Intuitive Machines in Houston, Texas, and they are the company that builds the satellite that's going to actually land on the moon. And they had already been on a path to get the propellant tanks for that system, but could not achieve the results they were looking for. And uh, they approached us and uh, asked if we could take a stab at this, see if we can make these tanks. So we came into this pretty late but we were able to build some prototypes and still delivered the first tank to them, functional, faster than previous people had even done. Well, now you have to qualify to go to space. You're gonna be sitting on a Falcon 9 for SpaceX, and they have, of course, a whole row of requirements, what you need to demonstrate that you can be on a vehicle like that. And then you have the actual satellite provider, which is Intuitive Machines. And then you have the launch range, and they have their safety folks in there. So we had to pass over 150 different tests just to get that stamp flight unit. If we have the highest level of approval, like to go to space or to land on the moon, that's about the highest qualification grade that you can achieve with any product. And then it's kind of rubber stamped for almost anything else. Roofer explains that many in the space launch arena believe cryogenic all-composite linerless pressure vessels were not achievable. But after years of development and testing, the technology is here, ready to help a new generation of space travel and exploration. The technology was developed with Scorpius's sister company, Microcosm Inc., which specializes in reducing space mission cost. Microcosm is based out of the same Torrance building. For Scorpius's part, it strives to make safer, lighter, and more cost-effective tanks. The Nova Sea Lunar Lander will carry NASA payloads and commercial cargo to the moon. Since it is using the Scorpius linerless all-composite tanks, which weigh much less than traditional tanks with metallic linings, more weight can be devoted to payload. This is a typical flange that is at the polar boss opening of a tank with a line coming out of it. If this is the tradition how this is made, if you want to take a look to see, you know, how much that weighs. I can't lift but, this. But I think oh. I have a version that you'll like a lot better. This has the wow. same or more strength than this piece and it doesn't corrode. Wow. And while the company aims to reduce the weight and cost for launch vehicles, it also strives to save the environment on Earth and beyond. When, of course, people have landed on the moon before that. And what did they do? They used a lot of highly toxic chemicals, hydrazine and other stuff that we really do not want in space. We don't want to even want it here on Earth because it's very difficult to handle. These are the people in those hazmat suits and all of that. It's like highly volatile, highly explosive stuff. And NASA has asked like 20 years ago for a clean solution to this. Because if we ever lose chemicals of that potency in space, a whole lot of, of trouble that we haven't even thought about yet that could be up there for a really long time. This would be the first time that we have what we call a clean landing. Because this time, we do away with all of these toxic substances. We're now landing with liquid methane and with liquid oxygen. So that's one thing. We are clean. It's fillable, drainable, all by normal personnel. It's not dangerous. 
and it can be done with, with existing technology now. That does change how we do things and how we would be landing maybe on other planets when we have these kinds of propulsion systems. Once Scorpius was established in 1999, both Microcosm and Scorpius started looking to relocate from neighboring Hawthorne. As we know, the South Bay in general, of course, was a big base for aircraft, airplane, commercial airplane. We were looking for suitable building and we came upon this place. We found it very, very inviting to business. City of Torrance was flexible, accommodating, uncomplicated, which is not always the case. It has a, a very reasonable taxation scheme. And we just felt overall the regulatory issues, the inspections, the fire, they were all so reasonable and all unbureaucratic really with us. So we found that to be very supportive. And Torrance has really become our home. We feel very comfortable here. This one-stop shop is comprised of just about 20 employees, a tight-knit group that works together on all projects, big and small. This is turnkey, despite the fact that we're so tiny. You come to us as a customer and tell us what you need. You can literally just explain to us what you need. We'll do the design, we do the calculations, we'll give you all the pricing, we build the tool, we do the testing, we do the packaging, the crating, the shipping. Marcus has built a unique culture and says there is a method to the madness. I've been asked what's the secret in the sausage here, and it's really them, it's the team. Everybody is into everything. So there is a, a healthy amount of looseness and chaos in this team to leave enough room that it's not a tight little slide puzzle where you can only move this way or that way. There's enough room for where pieces can move around, where they are doing the best job for the moment for what we need. And for a company that is headed to outer space, Marcus and his team adhere to a surprisingly grounded mindset. Here, for what we do and how we work, you know, I hear this like, failure is not an option. I really don't like this sentence at all. Failure is not just an option. It's the ingredient to success. It's the risk that we have to be able to take. We want to have an environment where failing is just fine. Just don't repeat the same mistake 20 times. If you're working on a multi-billion dollar program, where every little piece has to be guaranteed to never fail like ever. That really limits your approach and your choices how to solve a problem. We can go into our little back room and kludge something up to say, hey, what about this concept? What about this idea? And maybe you do something that's really crazy, but we can allow ourselves to do that. We can go across to the hardware store and buy a handful of tape and screws and nuts and bolts and, and, and the glue gun. And we go, what do you think about this? And everyone's like, Oh, this is crazy, but we can do these things. And they do, like when Scorpius technicians shop at a family-owned local business called Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. Us here at Rockler, we pride ourselves in offering a vast assortment of different tools and hardware to woodworkers, DIYers, and in this case, even space missions. It's pretty cool that we were able to help someone else in the community with their global project and getting some of our product on the moon. We have all these customers using our products and all different levels. We offer classes to help those that are wanting to get involved in the woodworking community. One little community store can really help out anybody and everybody in the community here of Torrance. Thinking outside the box has gotten this Scorpius team to where it is today, literally shooting for the stars and the sky's the limit. The next step is we would like to see the rocket take off get to an orbit, get to where it can prepare to land on the moon. That's, of course, a difficult part, which, of course, other people will be in charge of. It'll have a set of the tanks that we'll be looking at on the satellite for the propulsion system, which will be there for steering and for landing on the moon. And beyond that, there's definitely a multiple path approach to translate this technology and what we've developed into uses that are outside our industry that can be medical, can be industrial, can be an oxygen bottle in a fighter jet, can be a little breathing apparatus for a child. It can be the, the bottle that opens the door on an emergency chute for a large airplane. So there's a wide range of applications where we can benefit from this technology that we're just beginning to explore now.